Hi, my name is Henrik Voss. I'm the product manager for the electronic control system at ARI. In September 2012, I introduced, together with the great team behind me, the wireless compact unit WCU4. Since then, the WCU4 has been a great success and being used on many productions worldwide. We got a lot of feedback from you, our customers, positive feedback that we, of course, appreciated, and negative feedback also that we also appreciated. We took all those feedback and developed a new product with it, the successor of the WCU4. And I'm here today and quite excited actually to introduce to you the new fifth generation intelligent hand unit Hi5. Hi5 comes with a whole ecosystem around it, such as new radio modules, smart focus rings and batteries, and other very exciting features. Today I give you an overview over those features, and in the next couple of months we'll launch a series of web videos that spotlight all those functions. The Hi5 ergonomics look pretty much like a WCU4. That is because this ergonomics and this form factor was quite successful. People got used to it and it became like a standard in the market. But if I turn it around, you will see a radio module slot here at the back that is having a cover which I now remove. And that is because we are offering three different radio modules with a high five. One is a RF EMIP module. Just like the WCU4, it's fully compatible with all the ARRI cameras, the UMC4 motor controller, and the CFOS Mini RF lens motors. It's operating in the 2.4 gigahertz band, and it uses a direct sequence spread spectrum technology, which means that you can select a fixed frequency to operate in. Number two is the RF2400 radio module, which also operates in the 2400 MHz band, but it is a frequency hopper, which means it hops through the whole spectrum, avoiding interferences more efficiently. And the third option is the RF900 radio module. You see we have a massive antenna here. That is because it is a 900 MHz antenna. It's also a frequency hopper and it has a very powerful output. Now I can take one of those radio modules and connect it to the Hi5. I've just taken the RF EMIP radio module, which is fully backwards compatible to our white coded radio modules in the market. So like this, I can immediately work with an Alexa Mini, with an Alexa Mini LF, with an Alexa Plus, with a UMC4 or with a um, CFOS Mini RF. And I can also mix it, the system with the SXU1 for split iris, with another WCO4 for split iris, perhaps, or with another Hi5. In case you have a set where you really have interferences, to fight with interferences, you can use a second option. The second option is for example, the RF2400, which might be less prone to interference because it hops through the spectrum. Now, if you put this into the high five, you also need a counterpart radio module of the same type on the camera side. For this reason, we developed the radio interface adapter RIA1. The rear one has two Elbos connectors for connecting CFOS motors or other Elbos devices, such as OCU1. It also has a serial connector for connecting distance measurers, such as a Focus Bug CNRT or a UDM1. And it has a CAM connector for connecting ARRI or third party cameras. We also made a small bracket that allows you to mount the rear one conveniently on a camera. All right, so now I'm switching back to the RF EMIP module because I want to connect to the Alexa Mini LF camera behind me. I'm switching the Hi5 on with the power button. 
getting the Ari plum and getting a connection to the camera. Of course, a high five has a focus knob, an iris slider, and a control element that we call the force pad. It's a force sensitive knob that goes in X and Y directions. It can be used to control a zoom, but it can also be used to navigate through the menu. The display itself is a touch screen offering additional option to navigate through the menu if you want to use a touch screen, which can be quite useful if you want to program a lens, for example, and want have to type in some numbers. On the back side of the High Five, we have three assignable user buttons that can be assigned with the functions that are mostly needed during the shot and easily accessible. On the front side of the High Five, we have two more buttons that are new and were not present on the WCO4. One is the page button that toggles through the screen pages. So the first page in the default page is a classic lens data display. If I press page again, you see a camera setup display. And if I press it again, we have the menu display. The function button offers additional levels of functionality for the screen buttons around the display. For example, on the first screen, I can calibrate a lens or select a new lens file or set up the radio, whereas on the second function level, I can lock an axis or mark a focus mark on the focus scale. And on the third, I can limit a motor or set an offset. This allows us to offer you much more functionality in an easy and intuitive way than was possible on the previous version. As you can easily see, the High Five stand by itself. That is a pretty useful feature because you can just put it in front of you of a table if you have one. If you don't have one and you probably want to mount the High Five on a larger monitor with a Noga arm or a arm or something like that, a mounting uh, device, you can also very easily do this uh, because we have integrated some threads on the top side of the High Five. And those threads are basically in a, in a NATO rail. So you can either connect your mounting device directly to the top side of the High Five, or you use our new High Five monitor bracket. The High Five monitor bracket just fits onto the NATO rail. Um, and as you can see, it has a quarter inch screw to mount onto monitors. And in addition to that, it has a mechanism here to either not use the locating pins, that would be this position, or to use the locating pins of the monitor to get it more stable and uh, make sure it, it doesn't uh, twist around. So I'm just now mounting the monitor I have here on my high five, so you can see how it looks. So I've mounted the monitor bracket on the monitor and I'm sliding it now onto the NATO rail and locking it with a locking mechanism. Of course, you can also put a bigger monitor on the high five and to make it still stand on the table, you can use the three edge in thread on the back of the monitor bracket to attach a mounting arm, for example, or such a beautiful hex bar to make it stand on the table. Then, of course, you can also take such a piece and attach it to a C-stand. If you want to carry this around, we make your life easier with the neck strap for the high five. The neck strap has two very robust snap hooks, one on the lower right side of the high five and one on the upper left side of the high five. So like this, you can carry the hand unit very easily with one hand because those two points keep your high five plus a monitor pretty well in balance. And if I would have a bit bigger belly, I could even just place it on my belly without having to use my hands at all. Another new feature of the high five is a friction adjustment. With the WCO4, we also had a friction adjustment, but you would have to turn the focus knob in order to adjust the friction. With the high five, you do not have to turn the focus knob anymore, so your motors wouldn't move while you do that. And it goes from pretty stiff adjustment up to a very soft, very low friction. 
So now let's talk about the interfaces. The i5 has one Elbows interface, that is if you want to connect it hardwired to a camera, for example, or if you want to connect an additional accessory to it, for example, the OCU1. Then we have a serial interface, which can be used to connect to some monitoring devices. And third here on top, we have a USB-C connector that's covered by a rubber lip. With a USB-C connector, you have various options. You can, of course, either put a USB-C stick into it to perform software updates or to exchange lens files. If you don't have a USB-C stick at hand, you can also use a card reader to use SD cards or USB-A sticks to do the same thing. Second, you can use a USB-C cable to connect to your laptop and enter the service mode of the Hi5. And third, you could just use a USB-C connector to power the Hi5 from an external power source, such as a battery pack, a power bank, or your laptop. Talking about power, if I turn the Hi5 upside down, I have a battery cover here that is totally sealed, dustproof, and also sealed against moisture. If I open it, a beautiful battery comes out. At the same time, the Hi5 doesn't power down. We've built in some gold caps to keep the Hi5 running for more than 20 seconds if you use the EMIP radio module in order to hot swap batteries without losing connection to the camera. The battery themselves are in the same form factor like the L-series batteries from Sony, but they are ARRI branded. So they're backwards compatible to the Sony batteries, but the ARRI branded batteries include a chip that allows the Hi5 to very precisely read out the capacity of the battery. So you are always knowing uh, how much capacity your battery has and you don't run into the issue that suddenly your battery is empty and your hand unit shuts off. Then we have another cover here. It includes a USB-A Bluetooth stick. And that Bluetooth stick is really meant to stay there. With the Bluetooth stick, you can connect to our new ARRI ECS Sync app. With the ECS Sync app, you can manage lens files, user setups, software updates for Elbows devices, and also get the latest news and FAQs. And now I'm showing you how to upload a lens file from the ECS Sync app to the Hi5 real quick. I've connected to the Hi5 with Bluetooth. I'm opening the app, going to my lens files folder, including the whole ARRI lens data archive. Now I'm selecting my lens, which in this case is an ARRI Ultra Prime 32 millimeters with a scale class E. And I'm uploading this to the lens file folder in the Hi5. And it appears here now in the Hi5. From here, I can upload the lens file to my camera. Done. Another feature of the Hi5 hand unit is the so-called focus mapping. Focus mapping means is that you map the focus scale of a lens to a pre-marked focus ring on your hand unit. For this purpose, we are offering pre-marked focus rings. You already had them with the WCO4, and the WCO4 rings are backwards compatible to the Hi5. However, with the Hi5, we made new pre-marked focus rings. Those pre-marked focus rings have a new scale, which has a more even distribution of the lines and the marks. And this pre-marked focus ring have an integrated chip. This chip contains all the information that is important for the pre-marked focus ring. And when you put that chip on the hand unit, the hand unit on the other side has some contacts, some pogo pins, and when you put such a ring on it, the hand unit automatically detects the ring and maps the focus scale to the one of the lens. It's a pretty smart feature, and that is also why we call those rings smart focus rings. Now, in this case, I have a metric lens on my camera, and I've put a metric ring on my hand unit, and it all matches. 
but I could also just take an imperial ring and then the imperial ring is automatically detected and mapped to my metric lens. Of course, now I would probably also set the lens data display to imperial, which I'm just doing. And I'm ready to go. So we have 20 smart focus rings, 10 in metric, ranging from 20 centimeters up to three meters, and 10 in imperial with the same range. Now focus pulling can be really hard, especially with large format sensors. For this reason, there are various range finders measuring the distance from an object in front of the lens to the sensor plane. With the WCO4, we supported many of those range finders, and of course, we continue doing so with a high five. One of them is the SYNRT from the company called Focusbug. With the SYNRT, we established a bidirectional communication between the range finder and the high five system. This allows us not only to get up to two dynamic distance readouts on the high five lens data display, but also to get the distance marked from the SYNRT on the high five focus scale. In addition, it's possible to set up the SYNRT from the high five menu. Another important function of the high five is camera control. Just as the WSU afforded, we can control shutter angle, white balance, exposure index, and defilters and other functions directly from the handset. What's new with the high five is that we don't only support ARRI cameras, but also third-party manufacturers, such as Sony and RED. To protect the screen of the high five, we teamed up with one of the leading screen protecting manufacturers, Panzerglas, and provide a tailored screen protector for the high five. So our goal was really to build the most reliable hand unit in the market. That is why we offer those different radio modules, but that is also why we chose waterproof connectors. And not only the connectors are waterproof, the whole hand unit is water resistant, plus dust resistant. So it's the most water and dust resistant hand unit in the market. So this is the Hi5 system with very new, versatile and powerful radio modules, with the smart focus rings and other smart features that enhance your workflow on set, with a bulletproof body and with a new software architecture that will offer new exciting features even in future. We'll start shipping the Hi5 with a RF EMIP module, covering the full potential of the WSU4 and even more. Then we will continue with the new RF900 and 2400 radio modules with a radio interface adapter and with the new licenses to cover the full potential of the system. Thanks for watching. Please stay tuned on our channel and have a nice day.